We are rocking and rolling. We've got a problem, solution defined, personas defined, technical architecture defined, and then the gigantic competitive analysis. Let's build a product from scratch using AI assistance every step along the way. I'm trying to offload as much thinking as I can to the Oracle so I can move faster. Okay, here's generally what I'm gonna be building. Um, tentatively, it's called TLDR. I don't know, that name might already be taking, but it's a social read it later app that emails you a summary of all the articles that you didn't read uh, tomorrow, right? So you're going through the web, you see some articles, or maybe your friend texts you some articles um, that looks interesting, but you don't actually read them because you're busy. Grab it, pop it in the app, bookmark it, whatever the action ends up being. And the TLDR app will email you a summary with a link of that article tomorrow. So in this section, um, I'm mostly going to be focusing on discovery stuff. So, and I've got my tools laid out. So with GPT-4.0, I'm planning on doing some problem definition, solution definition, creating some personas, doing a little bit of the technical architecture design. And then with perplexity, I'm going to do a little bit of competitive analysis. It's really good at that. And then ultimately what we're going to end up doing is taking all of the content that I create with these two models or products and then pop it over into GPT, either O1 preview or O1 mini. I haven't decided, um, probably preview. Why not use the big guns, right? And I'm going to create a user journey narrative, kind of long form. I'm going to write out all the user stories, or O1 is. And I'll create a product one pager as well. And then I might actually have it uh, create uh, development tickets for uh, delivery as well. I'm building a social read it later product that emails users a summary of articles that they bookmarked from the previous day. Help me define the problem that I'm solving that I can later use in a PRD and other product documentation. People often save articles with the intention of reading them later, but busy schedules and information overload make it difficult to revisit every- Okay, I think that's really, really good. I think we're almost there, but you didn't really include the social aspect, uh, social features, being able to follow each other and actually see summaries of articles that my friends or famous people that I follow saved as well. So restate the problem, um, keep a lot of what you had previously, but also include the social feature. People often save articles with the intention of reading them later, but busy schedules and information overload make it difficult to revisit everything they bookmark. As a result, users miss out on valuable content, struggle to stay organized, and feel frustrated trying to catch up. Beyond that, there's also a lack of easy ways to discover interesting content. Okay, this is great. I'm going to copy pasta this one because this pretty much, pretty much gets me what I need. Okay, so with that most recent problem statement in mind, um, help me write a solution statement or define the solution roughly at a high level. A few things I'm, I have in mind that I want you to incorporate is, I think this could work as a Chrome extension, perhaps. Um, I think also a standalone uh, web app uh, could work. Um, I don't need a native iOS, native app uh, support just yet. We'll get there in the future. Um, I also want it to email folks and hook into LLMs to do the summarizing, and I want social features. So there's probably some sort of feed in a web app or in the Chrome extension as well that you can see, and you can also see people you're following and so on and so forth. So give me a kind of a rough high-level um, solution statement, please. The solution is a social read it later platform delivered via Chrome extension and a standalone web app. It allows users to easily bookmark articles and receive daily email summaries powered by LLMs of their saved content. The platform. Let's roll with that. Honestly, that was uh, spot on. Cool. We've got a problem statement, solution statement. Again, we're using, we're going to use these a little later to create kind of a mega prompt for O1 preview. So that's why this text is really, really useful. Let's move on to personas. With the problem statement and the solution statement in mind that you wrote for me, I want you to write or create three different personas. I want them to have slightly different needs and use, uh, slightly different use cases for the product. And I want those personas to show, be able to show off their needs and their pain points to be able to show off the wide array of functionality that is captured in the solution as well. 
Here are three different personas with slightly varied needs. Guys, this is so good. I'm going to spare you the, what, four minutes it took for GPT to recite all of this, but the three personas, Emily, the busy professional, Jake, the casual reader, and Sophia, the thought leader. Um, Emily and Jake are kind of similar in their needs. Um, I was really hoping that GPT would come up with a persona that in addition to wanting to um, quickly grab and summarize articles out of convenience, um, also wants to engage with uh, her, his or her audience. And that's what Sophia is doing with the product. So really, really excited that GPT was able to tap into both sides of the social features, the follower and the kind of thought leader side of social features, the kind of influencer side. So um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna paste these in. Oh, this is so good. This is this is gonna be so great for O1 preview uh, to read through. It's so much context. This is way more context than I would typically load up for O1 preview because it like takes a long time to write all this stuff. But let's talk a little bit about technical architecture now. So keep everything that you've already that we've already talked about in mind, the problem statement, the solution statement, the personas. And let's talk about technical architecture, right? So I'm going to need user management. I know that. Um, I think I want a Chrome extension and I need a standalone web uh, app as well. Don't need native um, app support yet. And um, I need a database because I want to be able to save the um, summaries that are generated. And I have to be able to hook into an LLM. I, I think I'd like to use OpenAI because I'm most familiar with that. Um, in terms of uh, back end, I'm, I'm familiar with Express and you know comfortable in JavaScript. Um, front end, um, less opinionated. I do want some sort of uh, component library loaded up so I don't have to do all of the um, visual design on day one. I can tap into some pre-existing visual design in a component library. Um, and uh, yeah, so help me think through the technical architecture. What would you recommend? Given everything you've outlined, here's a recommendation for the technical architecture. Front end. One standalone web app since you're less opinionated here okay cool so gpt spat out a recommendation but it also has some some options in here some or statements uh, which is fine and i think i'm just going to keep this for now and um i will let o1 preview do a little bit more of the thinking there so i'm just pasting in the architecture overview and then the kind of detailed explanation as well Okay, cool. We've got our problem definition, solution definition, three personas created that show off the features and technical architecture mostly defined, which is which is good enough for now. Let's hop into some competitive analysis with perplexity. All right, so I'm actually going to use 4.0 to help me write the perplexity prompt real quick. Okay, so here's my prompt, perform a competitive analysis on the on the market, identify platforms and apps that do the things that I want to do, know if they have social features, tell me if they have Chrome extensions or uh, web apps, and so on, use LLMs for summaries, analyze any relevant trends or gaps, be sure to include reviews, provide insights into the strengths and weaknesses, and so on. So this is actually... Um, quite a bit longer of a prompt. Oh, look at that. It's um, it's using using a beta feature called reasoning. More intelligent AI and in-depth research may take longer. I am totally fine with that. I am totally fine with perplexity taking a few extra seconds. Even a few extra minutes would be fine with me as long as it generates some really stellar competitive analysis. Can't wait to see what it does. This looks pretty good. So it actually read 34, 37 <laughs> sources. It read 37 web pages, and some of those include YouTube videos. Um, here's the apps it listed out Pocket, Instapaper, Omnivore, Save Day, Glass, Good Links. Social features are becoming increasingly important with most platforms offering some form of sharing or community interaction. However, there's still room for innovation in this area. Chrome extensions, web apps are standard. LLM integration is emerging as a key differentiator. Email summaries are common, but not universal. Pocket stands out for its wide integration and usability, but lacks search functionality. Instapaper is good for speed reading. That's not really what I'm interested in so much. And then here's the opportunities for new interest. 
Number one, improved search functionality. Number two, enhanced social features. Number three, customization, offering more personalized experience could be a key differentiator. Four, focus on niche markets targeting specific user groups, researchers, students, and so on and so forth. I think this is always a good idea, especially when you're launching a new product to focus on niche markets. So maybe I should revisit my personas here in a little bit and think about that. Let me copy all of this and paste it in the Notion. We are rocking and rolling. We've got a problem, solution defined, personas defined, technical architecture defined, and then the gigantic competitive analysis. This is awesome. So the next step is going to be to take all of this, weave it into a mega prompt, and then ask O1 Preview to generate a few of these things. It might be two different prompts. Um, I'm gonna play around with it and come back. Okay, I have combined everything we have created so far into one mega prompt. And I'm asking O1 Preview to create a few documents for me, a product one pager, a release roadmap, and then write user stories for all of those releases. I'm gonna pop this into O1 Preview. This thing is massive. Uh, look how long this prompt is. I'm gonna let it chug away and think on that for a little bit while I kind of talk through this prompt. I'm asking it to create a few docs, right? These are the docs, product one pager, release roadmap, user stories. And then I give it guidelines for each document. For defining the product one pager, I grabbed a bunch of copy from an article online. And for the release roadmap, I wrote it myself, so it's a bit shorter. And I also give it guidance on writing user stories. Next, I give it the full context of the product. This is where we're pasting in all the stuff we created earlier. Here's our problem statement. Here's our solution statement. Here's our personas that we defined. We got the competitive analysis right here. And lastly, the technical architecture. So all that's been loaded up over into O1 Preview. Oh, look, it looks like it gave us an A-B test. So on response one, it thought for 18 seconds, and on response two, it thought for 25 seconds. Let me read these and see if I actually dis uh, like one more than the other. They're actually pretty similar, but the one on the right is a little bit more detailed, and the uh, layout is just a much friendlier to read. So I'm going to go with that. Okay, and I think we're done. We've got our product one pager. It gave it a title. It called the app Stay Connected, which is which is totally fine. I may or may not keep that. Um, it's got a goal, define success for us, some nice metrics, achieve 50,000 active users, email interaction, social connectivity, user satisfaction. This is helpful stuff just to have jotted down. It wrote a backstory for us, some must have and some out of scope items, which is really useful to capture out of scope items like that native mobile app I kept mentioning. Interesting. It also put monetization out of scope. That makes sense. I didn't talk about it. I probably will want to monetize, especially if I start seeing anything close to this user engagement goal. Um, but we can we can tackle that later. A little bit of competitive analysis summarized here. Some key timing elements. It's basically talking about how AI is exploding and LLMs are exploding, and this is a good time to launch a product like this. Some storytelling and impact. And here's the release roadmap. So it's broken it into one, two, three, four, five releases. Let's read these. Core bookmarking and summarization, followed by daily email summaries, and then basic social features, followed by enhanced social engagement, and then native mobile app support. I went ahead and, you know, wedged that in there like any good CEO would do. <laughs> let's let's put that mobile app on the roadmap, shall we? Um, but I think this makes sense. The one thing I'm noticing that I would probably do differently, and that's fine, I can address this myself, is it has the Chrome extension and the standalone web app within release one. I'd probably just release one or the other on day one, honestly. Why release two different interfaces when you can release just one at first and it's gonna work just fine. But I think it makes sense to start with the core functionality, whoops, and then focus on the daily email summaries, hooking into LLMs and sending over the emails and then the social features, right? I think these first three releases make a lot of sense. Number four and number five, uh, I don't know, that's fine. And then it wrote user stories for each of them. Um, oh, interesting. As Emily, Jake, and Sophia, it used my personas and then it added another user. Okay, so this is good. This is gonna be good context that I can later use for cursor um, to write code for me. 
that was fun and all this took me about an hour to do obviously i edited this down so it's a much faster video than that but uh an hours of work and i have an entire product one pager with releases and technical architecture competitive analysis user stories written it's pretty sweet i mean things have changed a lot in terms of the product world and how llms can really augment product management. Um, this was really interesting for me. The next stage that I'm going to go in, the next session is going to be focused on taking those user stories, uh, specifically on release one, and, and mapping out um, individual development tickets. So I'm going to pop into Cursor, probably. I'll use a little bit of O1 preview to write the development tickets, and then I'll pop into Cursor and actually start building this thing. Um, although on second thought, I might need to do a little bit of design work, a little bit of UI. So I'll think about it and figure out what I want to do for session two, but I'm going to keep making these until the app is launched. So subscribe for more. Catch you later. Peace.